Hello, this is a quick video on lac operon mutants and this concept is pretty confusing to everybody. So in this video it would be totally clear so stay tuned till the end of this video. Lac operon is a inducible operon that means the default state is off and when lactose is present lac operon genes are turned on and that's why it's called inducible. Now let us quickly recap how lactose operon performs in presence of glucose and lactose. When only glucose is present, bacteria would choose glucose over lactose and the lactose operon would be shut off because there is no need of utilizing lactose. When glucose and lactose both are present, bacteria would prefer glucose over lactose and again there is no need of lactose metabolizing gene. So obviously lactose operon would be turned off. Only under the circumstances when lactose is present but glucose is totally absent, in that case bacteria has to metabolize lactose and need lactose metabolizing enzyme produced by the lac operon. And in that case, lac operon would be turned on. Now Jacob and Mono were performing this particular genetic screen where they isolated several mutants where lac operon was constitutively active. That means they knew that in those mutants, regardless of presence of lactose or glucose, the, the particular operon would be always on. And they tried to rescue those constitutive active phenotype with the help of F9 plasmid and they have created a merozygote situation. Now let's talk about the mut mutants. So first of all, we'll talk about lac OC mutation. This particular mutation actually prevents the binding of repressor to the operator sequence. That means that defect is present in the operator region in the DNA. Now let's say lactose is absent. In this circumstances, lac repressor cannot bind to the lac operator because there is a sequence defect in the operator region. Point to be noted that lac repressor in this case is fully functional. It is capable of binding but it cannot bind to the operator region because the DNA sequence is defective. And as a result, lactose operon would be on. And whenever lactose is present, similar thing would be happened. Lactose repressor would be first of all repressed and anyway it cannot bind to the lactose operator site, right? So operon status would be always on. So this particular mutation leads to constitutive activation of the lac operon. The second type of mutation that we are going to talk about is lac I minus mutation. This prevents the binding of the repressor. Why? Because the defect is in the repressor protein. Now, this repressor protein is a faulty version and as a result it cannot bind to the operator region and the defect is in protein. So, obviously there is some mutation in the lac I gene which leads to the production of a faulty repressor. So, when lactose is absent, lac repressor cannot really bind to the operator and suppress the operon. As a result, what happens? The operon is constitutively active. Doesn't matter lactose is present or lactose is absent. So the consequence of this mutation is constitutive active lac operon. Now let's talk about another type of mutation which is known as lac IS mutation. This is also known as super repressor because it prevents the binding of lactose to the repressor. Now this repressor can bind to the operator sequence though. That means when lactose is absent this repressor can generally repress the operon. So far so good. But whenever lactose is present, lac operon genes are not turned on and the repressor is not repressed. Because the allolactose cannot bind to this repressor due to a defect in its binding domain. So as a result, whether lactose is present or absent doesn't really matter. Lactose operon is always inactive. So this is the third type of mutation. Now let us try to understand which of these mutations are in cis, which of these mutations are in trans. So the problem that was faced by the scientist was in case of lac OC mutation and lac I minus mutation where we know that right now we know the defect is in somewhere in protein or somewhere in DNA but in terms of phenotype 
both these cases they found constitutively active lactose operon and they wanted to understand where did the mutation really happen so initially they had no clue that lac i is a mutation of protein or lac oc is a mutation in the operator dna region but they tried to classify where this mutation could have happened and that is why they use this merozygote approach in this merozygote approach they incorporated a f9 plasmid this particular f9 plasmid is incorporated in a bacterial background whose genotype is lac i plus that means it can produce a functional lac repressor lac oc that means it has a faulty dna binding sequence in the operator region and it has lac z plus that means the beta galactosidase can be produced from this particular sequence and the f9 plasmid which is incorporated it has a genome it has a genotype of lac i plus lac o plus and lac z minus that means lac z cannot be transcribed from this f9 plasmid now after putting this particular plasmid let's see what happens so first of all both these cases lac i is functional so lac i would produce the mrna ultimately it would lead to the production of functional repressor now this functional repressor can possibly bind to the operator region now it would try to bind to the operator region in the uh, bacterial chromosome it cannot bind because the sequence is faulty so binding is not possible so now it would bind eventually into the lac operator region in the f9 plasmid so obviously f9 plasmid would be totally repressed so any transcription from f9 plasmid would be repressed so at the end of the day what would happen the phenotype that means the constitutive active phenotype would not be rescued again you put lactose there would be constitutive active lac operon again you again you try to rescue with this particular f9 plasmid it is not rescued that tells the scientist that this was actually a mutation in the dna binding sequence now moral of the story is by putting this particular f9 plasmid we cannot rescue the constitutive active operon and hence this particular mutation is acting in a cis that means providing a dna sequence cannot really rescue the phenotype in this case so let's talk about the second type in this case the scientists have incorporated a particular construct that is lac i plus lac o plus and lac z minus in a background of lac i minus lac o plus and lac z plus so this particular mutant is constitutively active now in this case lac i from the bacterial chromosome would produce a faulty or non functional repressor but a functional repressor would eventually be produced from the plasmid let me tell you that this non functional repressor which is produced from the bacterial chromosome cannot repress the operon so obviously even in the absence of lac lactose there would be activity from the operon and the genes would be transcribed now when we put this f9 plasmid functional repressor protein is generated and this functional repressor protein can eventually bind to lac repressor so to to the actually uh, lac operator region in the bacterial chromosome as well as the operator region in the f9 plasmid since it can bind to the operator region it can repress the operon function in absence of lactose right now again lac operon which was initially constitutively active due to this mutation became conditionally active or let's say became inducible by putting this plasmid that tells us that some diffusible molecule is generated from this construct which is indeed uh, rescuing the phenotype from the bacterial chromosome in short lac i is acting in trans so i hope this was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up